Yes, sir. Uh, those new um, wild shapes are in one click more. You'll have to uh, load the extension, the mod. So I have them in. Uh, so I got this text file. I open it up. I just copy all that into something, or? Uh, no, I was just uh, sending you a list of what you can change into now. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So I need. Oh, okay. So to do that, I need to jump out and load an extension, or? Uh, you need to go to the library. Okay, library. And turn on one click more. Okay, I have critically awesome essentials module one click druid, but we're looking for one click more. Correct. A um, whole bunch of 5e stuff. Uh, basic rules, but then the blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'd use the search box. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, I actually forget about the search box. I did one click, and it didn't show up there. Supplements. I don't think it's in there. I go to modules. Uh, just try searching for one. O N E. Yeah, it's a uh, critically awesome essentials module. One click more. I had to load it. Okay, now I got it. So I click on it. Yeah, now uh, there'll be stories and spell tabs. Uh, no. Uh, if you go back to your library and then just click on it. There it is. Yeah. It just showed up. So I got story. And so spells. Go. Okay. Spells. Wild shape. Okay. So yeah, I was... Like, or I would just drag, drag the wild shape into my wild shape. Right. Thing by the level. Yep. They went through a bunch of the, uh... D and D modules and uh, added modules specific. Like I was hoping for more than a bunch of racing dinosaurs from TOA, but <laughs> well, cave badger is there. I could be an enormous tentacle. There's a bunch of stuff there. A young lizard. There's some good stuff in there. A giant lightning eel. <laughs> oh yeah. Giant coral snake. Obliteros. Those are the obliteros. Uh, I'm not sure that I like that evil laugh. And I mean, th these are supposed to be things that you have seen, which details. Just details. which I have a bad feeling <laughs> about. It's details. Just the devil is in the details.
Give me half a second, we will get started. So you know it's interesting, I I opened Unity and all the modules are, are there to load from both Curth from both Curse of the Crimson Throne and Rise of the Rune Lords. So I opened one of the Rise of the Rune Lord maps and it has the line of sight all laid out on the map, but it didn't work right. Like I I don't know how do you Toggle it on, I guess. <laughs> it's like, yeah, a yeah. few weeks ago, I uh, figured out how to turn it on and then forgot, and I've been pondering that same question today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was looking at, when I was looking at the thing, it gave me the impression that you were going to have to repurchase any modules you already had. Uh, no, not at all. Oh, that's new. Or maybe, maybe, I guess I just have, you just have to repurchase the license. Uh, yeah, maybe. you'll have to get a Unity license okay. if, if you're gonna run games. Yeah, I got uh, I got the Kickstarter upgrade one, so mine just upgraded from there. And hey, they're not that far behind schedule either. <laughs> week and I just mostly remember frog moth <laughs> uh, yeah I, I spent half of last week in a, a zoom meeting with my extended family so I don't remember Jack shit <laughs> Well, uh, you entered Omo, um, you encountered a guard shack that had a whole bunch of graffiti on it, and uh, let's see, you found a walled compound that had smoke coming out of it and a whole bunch of corpses, and you rescued Orvix, who was a translator slash scribe for the Red Wizards, and you found Kubazan Shrine, and Kathma ended up waking up the Frog Hemoth. That I remember. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, and then he fell because he thought his faith would carry him. Okay, yeah, that's coming yes. back to me. That was awesome. The whole time in the back of my head is like dun 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 shit back to me ah give it spikes god damn it and uh Orvix uh identified where shrines four, five and six were. You had already knew about one, two and three. And, and we're like at three, right? Uh, yeah, you're the P on the map. Well, I guess one is kind of like the obvious choice. It is, but any time... They, they might be able to see us if we go around the front. 
because we were under observation and the guard shack. As long as yes. we stay on this side of the wall, oh, right, maybe yes. we're okay. Oh, they, they might think Froghemoth got us. And I'm going to make sure you all did receive a long rest. And there were a total of nine, right? We've only... Yes, there are nine. So we six, see six on the map, but the theory is that heading north, there's another seven, eight, nine up there somewhere. Uh, correct. So, like that amphitheater might be one that's on the section of the wall. There's the building with the three pits. Oh, right. Yeah, that's, so, that would be a good location. So, so at least check them out. They might not be, but... And there might be some other strange building that doesn't look that weird from this map. And Hypnofrog was number three, right? Hypnofrog was number three. Okay. So maybe we should explore the ruins on this side of the wall all the way up to the amphitheater and look for any other shrines on this side. And then maybe come down the other side. Right. And then cross over. Do you more of a stealth thing? No. Do the dot matrix thing. One row, yeah. then cut over the next row. That's right. And during the night, um, you know, you had the typical sounds of the jungle, uh, but you never could shake the feeling that you are indeed being watched. Damn snakes. But uneventful night and it's now uh, day 27 in the jungle so uh, up the wall or up towards the amphitheater yeah just yeah glance in each building and have a thing take a quick glance in each building and see if any of us are locked doors or something like that bodies graffiti more sexy dogs for the druid <laughs> oh my god yes I can't believe I forgot <laughs> Uh, he Ooh, can baby. actually turn into a wild dog now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he got uh, real close in studying those things. How come every time we're getting ready to move out, the druid's in the corner licking his balls? What the hell? Because he can. Leave him alone. Don't don't be all judgy. Judgy much? Now i got to look in that library for a wild dog. <laughs> okay, uh, yes, uh, you are advancing up towards the amphitheater uh, thing is uh, checking out the buildings and, you know, it's more what you expect from, um, a, you know, a forbidden, forgotten city that's been abandoned for a long time. And you get up to, uh, I just moved the P on the map. But uh, a thing alerts you that um, he has found an abandoned campsite. And uh, you can see torn backpacks and rotted gear littering the ground around these three molding moldering tents and at the center of the camp you see a scrap of dirty yellow cloth hanging from a crude wooden flagpole um, you're not detecting any immediate danger um, that you know you just got jungle sounds and uh, it appears to uh, have been abandoned for a uh, little bit of time. <laughs> I'd say roughly six, seven months, maybe. What color? I'll, I'll look through thing, Thing's eyes as he goes up to the flag. Is it just a, a single color, or is there more of the flag available? 
Uh, yeah, it, it's just a scrap of uh, dirty wooden, dirty yellow cloth hanging from the flagpole. Uh, it doesn't look like it's a flag, just a random piece saying, just to draw attention to it. Well, we'll leave it in place. If it comes down, someone will notice from far away. And you do have uh, three tents in the immediate vicinity. Um, I guess we'll uh, suggest we position ourselves to look down the, the adjoining streets and then I'll have Thing um, peer in the tents. Oh, these, uh... No, oh, actually, never mind. I don't, we don't see them, right? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll let everyone know what Thing sees. That there's a, a campground up ahead, or campsite up ahead, three tents. Flagpole with the yellow scrap of fabric on it. I think we should leave the fabric up there that way. Because someone might see it from a distance and if it's disturbed. I'll have Thing take a look inside if we just keep our eyes open in case disturbing the tents brings something out. One of the adjoining buildings. All right. Okay. Um, it, from thing size, uh, you're seeing that these tents uh, have already been looted, and you know what's there is moldy and rotten from being in the weather. Uh, the tents are definitely not something you'd want to sleep overnight in. However, you thing does find a um, a moldy parchment, and it it's attached to one of the tent flaps. Well, what does it say? Well, I'll have um, <laughs> well. It's attached how? Sewn? I uh, no, it, it it's pinned. Um Okay. Um Yeah, I'll have him unpin it and then fly it back to us. Okay. I hate the font they did this in. <laughs> And you, uh, <clears throat> thing brings back the parchment, and you see that uh, Ray Denlin has a lead on the Eye of Zoltek. Uh, the old goat found a obelisk to the north that marks the entrance to the tomb of the nine gods. The eye must be in, uh, but the door is magically locked. We think the secret to opening it lies in the holy shrines. Uh, we are headed into the ruins to check them out. God willing, we will be back tonight. Rosnisi's serpent people are on the prowl, so be careful. Uh, if you get in trouble, sound the horn twice and I'll come running. For the yellow banner, Lord Brixton. So the main the bell. Do, do we know have we heard of Lord Brixton prior to this? Uh no, I do not believe we have. Okay, because it's just me. Never mind, carry on. Let me double check that. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
Um, Orvix. Let's see. Not seeing an obelisk on this map. It may be just too small or not highlighted. Uh, that is correct. It's not highlighted on the map. Does everyone think that we should continue on this side of the wall? Or should we move to another section? Because if the final temple is here, we need to get all the stones before we get to the final temple. I mean, really, it doesn't matter because we're going to have to search search these temples anyways, right? Like, that's... We might as well finish the this idea. section, I guess. Yeah. So either yeah, way, we're going to be hitting... Either way, we're going to have to hit them. Yeah, so unless we have any other information besides just proximity, if we don't have, like, a serious, like, kind of reason, I mean, I don't even know why, oh, is why it really matters. We just go to temple from the first nine, like number ten, or is this like one of the nine, or we don't know. What says the puzzle is something about the other nine shrines, and this is the temple okay. not of one of the people, but the nine, right? Okay. I mean, we could keep going on this side, and if we come across it, we could just kind of you know mark it on the map. And yeah, and then continue. Yeah. On and continue on like oh well there it is yeah without more information there's there's really not much else we can do i think besides like continue on lick the front door see his tongue gets stuck that'd be awesome uh, uh, out of character uh the tomb of the nine gods is your final destination oh uh, yes we don't want to probably cut to the front of the line on that well um as it says, uh, you know, the door is magically locked and they think the secret to opening it lies in the holy shrines, which from your last shrine you walked out with a stone cube. So, so. it's our understanding that we ev evade detection on this side of the wall. So we might as well keep going on this side and you know, explore until we get to the end and then turn down the other side. Yeah, we don't really know anything, but if, right. if we have to climb over the wall, the entire city can see us at that point, so... Right. Yeah, so we can just go, like, just continue the way we're going until we find a reason to not do so. Right. Mark the temple when we pass it. We can't get in yet because we don't have all we need. Hopefully we're not jumping the gum to the end of the end of the module and the nasty stuff that will eat us immediately. <laughs> Straight to Mr. Happy. Go. Oh! Okay. Um, yeah. Um, let's say you all got started about 8 a.m. and checking the buildings and so forth. Uh, it's taken you roughly uh, about a half hour, 45 minutes to get up to where you're at. And as you're sneaking through the alleys and so forth, once again, you just have this feeling that you're being watched. Um, but you're, you really can't identify that you're not seeing anything that says, hey, someone's watching us. But uh, you managed to uh, move on up further. Um, part of it, you've actually got to uh, slide between the walls, narrow alleyways. But you um, come up to the section uh, not too far from uh, the amphitheater, and you find an overturned. Go ahead, Cheer. But you find an overturned wagon lying on, lying on its side on the street ahead. Um, 
you can see rotting flower petals littering the ground around it and bees have made a nest in its broken wheels and you can see a freshly cut garland of jungle flowers hanging over the side of the wagon's tongue. Since we had to scoop between the wall and the buildings, where, what path would that wagon have taken? Uh, it would have come down from the, uh, from the north. Okay, so down from the north somewhere. Because a wagon can't be, the, the stairs over the wall aren't a ramp, they're stairs, right? Uh, correct. Uh, and flowers are fresh, so this happened recently. And that wagon is in the courtyard that the P is in now? Uh, correct. Is there a big entrance to that building to the west? Yeah, like a gate or anything? Uh, yes, there would be a gate. Take a look with the <clears throat> thing, maybe? Um, yeah, I'll have fling, er, fling, <laughs> thing, uh, fly over the wagon. Now it was just full of flowers, or what was in the wagon? And I'm back. Come back. Um, it had like flowers attached I, to it, or something. I, yeah, it there, there, there's rotting flower petals around the wagon on the ground. Uh, you got the freshly cut jungle flowers hanging over the side of the wagon. Um, otherwise, uh, the contents of the wagon, uh, you know, this wagon's been here a really long time. And, uh, you know, there's a couple of uh, broken barrels and uh, rotted cloth and whatnot that were in the wagon. Okay, so the something is hung on the wagon and there are flower petals around but it's not like the flower petals were on the wagon when it broke down correct okay so the wagon's been here a while but somebody visited here and threw a bunch of flower petals around yeah and an offering to the bees maybe hmm. uh as thing is flying around and looking um uh, he sees a moss-covered stone that's uh, on the far side of the overturned wagon. It's half buried in the mud. And um, from just the little part that Thing can see, um, he can see uh, concentric rings of inscriptions covering its surface. Okay, I'll sh he's not strong enough to pull that out. I'll let the rest of the party know that Thing found a moss-covered stone in the courtyard, but we're going to have to have somebody pull it out. Right. Um, like, is it inside the walls or outside the walls, courtyard-wise? Uh, it's outside the walls. Okay, great. After making sure, you know, a captain will ask if it's, you know, if thing sees anything around. If if not, captain will start walking towards the uh, the moss covered stone. I'll have thing go to the top of one of the nearby buildings and look down on the area to see if anything's coming. Okay. See anything, see anything from a higher vantage point, but no taller than the top of the building. Uh, yeah, uh, he's not seeing uh, anything that would be immediate threats. Uh, from his vantage point, you know, you can see a few wild animals here and there. 
And as you get closer to uh, this stone, uh, it's actually a stone disc, and uh, you can see there's inscriptions carved into it, and um, some of them are written in common, and the others by now you can recognize as being written in Old Omuan. Oh. Omuan. <laughs> and is that, is that the Tabaxi language? Or? Uh, that was uh, the one of the old languages of Chult. Gotcha. And um, as you're starting to examine the stone closer, uh, you realize that it's actually a tablet, a stone tablet, and Ooh. it's about three foot in diameter and weighs mm, roughly about 200 pounds. That's that's a lot. <laughs> And uh, the parts written in common, uh, you can see the words like Queen and Brave New Gods and Omu Will. <laughs> All right. Queen, Brave New Gods, and Omu's Will. And uh, you'll have to uh, uncover it, dig it out in order to read the rest of it. All right. I guess I, I guess we know what we're gonna be doing for the next. Four. <laughs> so uh, I think let me check really quickly inventory. Okay, so Kappa has a lift push drag of four hundred and eighty, uh, which should cover the stone tablet, including you know his equipment he's wearing, right? Yeah, it should. Great. So he's gonna be very careful, you know. It might take him a bit, but you know, to Kafka, this is the mythic velocity of Obi. He really doesn't want to break anything that he doesn't have to, even though he's <coughs> technically stealing from the temple. Um, and he's gonna spend extra care and time in lifting the stone tablet up and, you know, seeing if it can stand on itself, so they can, you know, I don't know, read both sides. Is there a is there a text on the quote backside end quote? Uh, no, it's just on the one side. Alright, he's gonna go like lean it against a nearby wall or something. Okay, and um, you know, uh, Orbix is with you, he's looking at it, and you know, he starts reading it. Uh, he says that what's written in common is also written in old, is written in Omuan. And yeah, uh, it reads that Queen Napica proclaims that the free people of Omu fear nothing. Uh, brave new gods protect us as Uptal did before, but does no longer. Omu will rise again, and Napica shall reclaim all that is hers by right of conquest. So this is basically back from when the seven was it seven or nine? Bad uh, nine. The nine trickster gods sort of were a thing, right? Correct. Like the whole myth field that we wrote. Okay. I mean red, not red. But that's uh uh, all you're finding of interest, uh, the flowers, um, don't, uh, don't seem to make, uh, any sense. <laughs> there's no blood on the flowers, there's, you said maybe there was a garland on the front of the uh, yeah, uh, you've got this garland of freshly cut jungle flowers. So maybe it was people honoring this stone tablet in some way. Who knows? 
Um, do we see tracks anywhere? Can anyone track? I said there was mud, so maybe there might be footprints. Uh, yes, and um, <clears throat> bringing it up, that's a good point. Uh, remember weed? Your little uh, uh, Kawash's yeah. little plant buddy? Uh, yep. Vegemite. The, yeah, veg veggie pygmies. Um, the tracks look exactly like his. And, you know, you can see him of, uh... He's back for revenge. <laughs> uh, you can see that they come up and approach the cart, and then they turn away and... Go towards the wall, go towards the north. Uh, actually, that they're... And this wagon's been here, and... You can see so many tracks uh, of, you know, there's ancient ones and newer ones in the mud. But uh, it's almost like something come up to the cart and then just turned around and walked away. And they lead to uh, all different directions and, you know, after 10, 15 feet, uh, you lose track of them. Okay, well maybe let's check out this compound to the west here and then we'll just continue north. Alright. Okay, uh, the, the compound to the west is um, it is the uh, it's a fancier dwelling than most of the houses. Like uh, someone influential from the old days lived there. Um, Did we stumble upon a uh, a first tier mansion or first class mansion, rather? Ah, uh, yes, you did. <laughs> And, uh, uh, unfortunately, the majority of the possessions that remain inside the mansion have been, uh, you know, the, the good stuff's been looted, it, it's a wreck, uh, you know, there's bird's nest and all kinds of litter and debris inside, but nothing of value. Rich people usually have a vault. Do we see a broken in vault? Or they don't do basements here because they don't. It's too much water. Maybe they don't do basements here. Uh, yeah, you're not finding any basements. And. Okay. Ground is too moist. Water table's too high. Okay, well, I guess we continue north. Is there other ideas? I think that that's good. Yeah, that's about it. Yep. We're almost done with the north stretch, anyways. Yep. Let's do it. And give me a second. Let's do it. And campaigns, TOA images. Okay, uh, you make your way up to the location of the amphitheater. And um, I, you, you see this ruined amphitheater looming over the surrounding buildings. There's vines clinging to the steps and animal statues are lining the stands and uh, the muddy ground outside is stripped clean of vegetation and an eerie silence hangs over the area. 
no bird cry, no birds cry, no insects chirp, nothing stirs. Yeah. That's creepy. Could be a magic effect so that whoever's doing oratory could be heard. Is there any entrance in the amphitheater, or has it just been open space? Uh, give me a second, and... Boy, I did not spell that right. And Put a grid on this. Oh, I hate doing grids. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, close enough. And stick you all on the map over here. on the top layer. Is that spelled right? Amphitheater? No, uh, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed what? it too. I was like, hmm. <laughs> it's like, it's like we're in the retarded amphitheater. Amphitheater. Hey, yeah. Go to the amphitheater. Hey, I just <laughs> grabbed it from Google Images. <laughs> maybe it's a, maybe it's a Forrest Gump thing. So there we were at the amphitheater. <laughs> Me and Baba. Um, and as you're approaching the amphitheater, you can't help but notice these giant clawed footprints in the mud. And from hill to toe, each footprint spans over five feet. And as you get closer, you start finding these long, slender, slender feathers that are scarlet and orange and green. And there's these heaps of dung large enough to bury a dwarf. Well, I say we have we hide behind rocks and have thing look around for whatever it is making this stuff. All right. <clears> hmm. <throat> I was I was gonna ask if I would know if I would be able to identify what it was, but I guess not because I rolled a. <laughs> Uh, Sheer, uh, I'm actually going to give you this one because uh, you have encountered, what, two Tyrannosaurus Rexes now? Shit. <laughs> and uh, they, they look like they match wholeheartedly. You know, I would have been much happier with, hmm, this shit is made out of... But I guess we gotta fight a team back. We don't have to unless it has one of the blocks we need. So we could run away right now. Yeah. I got a dollar because it's got one of the blocks we need. Probably. Okay, let's see. It 
yeah, um, as thing is flying around, um, the one thing he is not seeing is this massive dinosaur. <laughs> Maybe it's invisible. And it is just eerily quiet, though. Invisosaurus. Rex. Chameleon Rex? Oh, that's just not yeah. fair. Uh, that'd be cool. No, like the no, that no. Oh, not for us, it wouldn't. Give it a British accent, it'd be like the Geico Lizard. And as thing is uh, flying around toward the center, let's see. see. By the invisible, Invisosaurus Rex. If I was Geico, I would radiate the gecko and make it into a Tyrannosaurus creature and then have it attack and eat flow from progressive. That's what I would do. Just thinking out loud. Really don't like that video. I, I feel like there are a number of issues with that start it starting with uh, I don't know, Pepsi has appeared in Coke commercials, hasn't it? So maybe not copyright, but you would have to get the actress for Flo to agree to that. Well, which would probably parody her job. You're, 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 purely, you're totally clear if you just claim parody. It just has yeah. to be someone with a ridiculous dark hair, hairdo and then in a white apron. Yeah, I think just the notion of Gekzilla. <laughs> with like a my name is Flo tag. That's all you really need. Yeah, all you, yeah. <laughs> and then it's parody because... Honestly, Gekzilla? No. Anyway. My question would be, is that, like, it's insurance, though. So, like, you know, giant lizards smashing things around, eating yeah. people. And then the tagline would be like, I'll bet Progressive doesn't insure this. <laughs> <laughs> is that technically an act of Godzilla? As Gekzilla is eating flow. Chomp, 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 chomp. Anyway. All right, I'm sorry. I, I've derailed you again, Wintermute. I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. Uh, but his thing is uh, flying around. All of a sudden, he starts, uh, you know, he's sending out the alarm. And get rid of the wild dogs. Dumbass, there was an easier way to do that. Um, Iron Man eating um, is right behind us, is it? <laughs> no, no, sorry. I, I can make him there if you want. No, thank you. <laughs> and drag that, drag that over. Okay, um. And I'm going to post an image in Discord. Uh, you do see five creatures uh, approaching the amphitheater from the east. And there's four. There's five. And Discord. Oh, it's a great image of the Hypnotoad. <laughs> but you can see five of these dinosaurs. Yeah, nice. All the ones in the middle? Oh, I think we can handle that one. Five chickens? Robot yeah. chickens. <laughs> he looks dancing. Is it just me or does he look like he's... Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. Hello, he's doing he's doing like a thriller thing, right? <laughs> oh yeah, thriller. He could be doing that too. That is exactly why I chose that image. <laughs> it's a it's the alien from uh, from Spaceballs at the very end, doing the song and dance. Hello, my ragtime doll. Oh, 
Oh, the Michigan frog there. Yeah, yeah, the Michigan frog. There's a blast from my childhood. So, thing is invisible. You all are in some brush surrounding the amphitheater. So, they have not seen you yet. But they are coming into the amphitheater. So, initiative? Uh, that's up to you. Do you want to fight or run? How big are these things? I mean, oh, well, it's a five foot, it's a medium creature, so I guess that's not too bad. I'll have. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Uh,. I think we should hide, and I'll whisper that, and then I'll have Thing fly over to the other side of the amphitheater, deeper into the amphitheater, and start making noises. Dinosaur noises. What noises do dinosaurs make? Oh, I love the, uh, uh, the description for this current monster from this module is that it's the larger cousin of the Velociraptor. And it kills by gripping its target with its claws and feeding while the creature is still alive. <laughs> like a praying mantis. Okay. <laughs> nice. So uh, the thing goes over, starts making some noise, and, you know, naturally they start, you know, coming down even closer to investigate. Uh, would you all like to uh, make some stealth checks <laughs> if you're hiding? Sure. Will do. This isn't going to end well. <laughs> Did we have this? Oh, I'm wearing full play if I have disadvantage from stealth. Nope. <laughs> yeah, deep. I beat Bjorn. Oh, Bjorn rolled again. I rolled with disadvantage. Looks uh, like you did too. Yeah. Why? Uh, armor stealth penalties. Uh, that's part of this oh. extension. And... Okay. Kathma, what kind of armor are you wearing? Chain. Uh, chain mail. So, <laughs> self disadvantage as well. Heavy armor. Uh, yeah, uh, needless to say, y'all not that quiet. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you've got the attention, one of them, let's see, what do I need to beat? Uh, yes, uh, uh, there's noise, you all make some noise coming from that bush, and one of them turns its head, sniffs the air, makes a few little sounds, and starts heading your way. Let's go and grab Kathma and start feeding on him. While <laughs> hey, aren't dinosaurs technically creatures? I mean, you know, animals, you can just be a lady dinosaur. Come on. <laughs> Come on. It's worked have, before. It's worked before. before. Have, this I is have, our tactic. I have, uh, yeah, this is our new tactic. This is our my, This is our flying V, you know? Dinosaurs won't even buy me a drink. Animal honey pots, man. This is what our, like, mercenary company will be known at, known for. Uh. <laughs> Uh, gang raped by dinosaurs. I love it. Awesome. The old druid honeypot scheme. <laughs> the druid honeypot. So, uh, he is getting even closer, and the rest of them, uh, one's kind of working his way towards you, but the rest of them are going to investigate the noise that thing is making. So, it's down to, do you want to run, or do you want to roll initiative? I vote the I think, latter. Let's go, guys. We can I think do we it. Roll initiative. We haven't fully explored this place yet, I think. Right. 
Okay. All right. I guess it's time to take out. Oh, the I rolled a one right after Bjorn rolled a twenty. Oh. <laughs> time to take out the trash. And by the way, I, I did reset everyone to having uh, two inspirations. Oh, nice. Is yeah. it pity for burning all that inspiration to prevent, <laughs> <laughs> to prevent the... Uh, oh my god, the that's right. Oh, the, uh, yeah, the, that whole initiative debacle. Yeah, who 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 said uh, who said it? It was something like uh, we just took a bunch of uh, inspiration out back and burned it. <laughs> yeah, that's what you did. I didn't give you any of my inspiration because I was just like, look at them. Like, they're just burning more. <laughs> they're just throwing. They're trying to put the fire out with bills, dollar bills. Yeah. Uh, went two, like one at a time. It's not even. It's not even doing anything. <laughs> and. Um, uh, while well, Maltok is uh, smacking Kathma around, uh, you know, uh, number 15 sticks its head up in the air, and he does get a whiff of adventurers. A whiff of adventurers. Like, like a larger dinosaur that, step in one. That pungent <laughs> smell of adventurers. <laughs> He's got your scent. <laughs> yeah, like you got wiped off on a rock or something. And he comes in, and unfortunately, uh, Bajorn is the first. And let's see. And Sheer, um, you notice uh, this dinosaur. Um, is coming towards you and let's see you see these two claws come towards you and you're able to dodge the first one and you're able to dodge the second one and this dinosaur starts making all kinds of racket. Um, number two is headed up and it's trying to find what's making this noise from thing. And Bajorn, you're up. <laughs> oh, they have a uh, second attack at this point, don't I? Mm. Well, I bought five. We have a, five, have yeah. Two. That's better. That's more like it. Okay, and number 14 was already headed that way. And it runs up, and Orin. Orin. Um. Pop out from behind this rock. Target number fourteen. And Bjorn hit it, huh? The other one. Okay. I'll just do the bu -bu 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 good old Udris blast. So targeted attack. Whoa, there you go. 
And that was not great. Second one goes there. It's a miss. Ten, so I'll do another fifteen back there. I have thing fly a good fifteen feet up in the air. Over here and make even more noise. Hopefully we can peel these off one at a time. Okay. That's my turn. Step. Let's make some magic. Um, okay, well, I think it looks like Bjorn's got number 15 well in hand. So, I will call lightning it because I've been dying to. <laughs> and I'm going to have it drop down right here between these two so that they both get caught. It says any creature within five feet. So if I stick it between them, in theory, both of them will get hit. And then uh, it does 3d10. So I cast. Oh, hold on. The save is not correctly calculated. So it's the uh, group attack. Is that right? And group, it's eight plus ability, right? That's the the save DC. Eight plus ability modifier plus proficiency, which is plus three right now. Oh, but it says type dex. Is that? It's just it's a save. It's a dex save. So it's a dex save. So it's eight plus ability plus proficiency modifier. Uh, so my dex is fourteen. That should be a two. No, no, they're no. It's it's still your wisdom. It's still your wisdom. It's they right. have to make a deck save against your wisdom. So the if you're, is, so type is dex. Stat is wisdom. Yeah, your yeah. stat for the the DC is wisdom. Yes. Okay. Now, okay, that's what I was missing. Okay. So I cast it or I attack. I cast. I just cast. Right. One saved, one didn't, and then I just do damage, right? Correct. And then I apply the effect to me because it lasts for the, while I'm concentrating. Yeah, up to ten minutes. Okay. And then uh, I can. I'll just. I, I guess I'll just. Uh, I'm just gonna move over to here. Actually, I go to there. Okay. And then I guess that is my turn. Okay. Uh, 18 is uh, wounded, so you definitely have his attention. Well, does the lightning call from him or the sky? And... It comes from the sky. Clouds form overhead. Yeah, he is just going to back up in a different direction. And I gotta put Orbix, he's already there. And Yeah, he's just gonna come behind the rock. <laughs> Plus. <laughs> he can do nothing at range. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna move right over here to get flank. Go with a rapier. Uh, 
All right. Oh, you shish kebobbed him. Yeah. Some good sixes on there. And step with call lightning, there would be an obvious thunderclap that goes with it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I assume so. It is lightning after all. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, and, uh... All right, Diego, you're up. Yeah, I just uh, I'm just gonna finish my move uh, over there, and then uh, oh, I'm done. I didn't see the move. All right. All right. Uh, twelve after being hit by lightning and seeing you all on the stairs. Can't do it. Can't do it. <laughs> he comes running up and does nothing but <laughs> roar at you. <laughs> All right. Looks like, uh, Dennis or 12 has volunteered as tribute, so kind of go, go like this. And he will uh, attack the dinosaur, just plain and simple. Um, where did this go? There it is. And yeah, end of turn. Okay, uh, number two is going around thing, trying to find the noise. I guess I'm gonna scoot up here and go for the kill. Try to anyway. Yeah, you did some damage. on up shot hundred and five feet plenty we'll have thing come on down and uh, yelp or make noises at the Dionychus Dionychus it is and give me the help action targeting there we go after he gives me the help action I will do the Eldritch Blast Uh, you know you missed, right? <laughs> I do now. I didn't even bother to look because I had advantage. <laughs> I didn't even know. I could possibly miss. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> so confident he doesn't even look at the roll. Well, let me attack again and we could just count that damage as that one, I guess. Second attack is a hit. So you can okay. just keep an eye, I suppose. Yeah. Wow, that was crazy. Two is. And that is my turn. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna uh that way over there. That one there is three on one. So I guess I'm gonna go ahead and whack the one that's or try to whack the one that's the thing. So I don't have to cast it again because I'm concentrating. So I just he gets a save and then I do damage, right? Save. He fails. He takes 25 points of damage. That's a nice roll. I should roll like that more often. Uh, you know, I hate to get technical, but the uh, thing is within five feet. <laughs> oh. Invisible. You wouldn't have known that. Well, not necessarily, because I can put it right. There. But would you have known to put it there? Come on. Know. You know that imp had it coming. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's that's between winter mute and the owner of the imp <laughs> uh, i just tried sorry uh steph uh drag the uh save over on the thing <laughs> okay i see where this is going <laughs> success so thing takes 12 points i don't think thing can take 12 points <laughs> Or maybe you can. <laughs> no. so to, okay. okay. Sorry if I fried your familiar, man. He, technically, he's invisible. It's not my fault. <laughs> you didn't even know you fried him. <laughs> Lightning <laughs> stops <laughs> midair. <laughs> did, some, did somebody hear something hit the ground? <laughs> nope. Although, although whoever owns thing is probably like, what the... Ah. Now, now the smoke coming off a thing would be visible. <laughs> good Moltec. Moltec sucks. Hate yep. that guy. Sorry about your. Well, he's not technically. He's only mostly dead, right? No. I think he's thoroughly dead. Yeah, he's dead, dead. <laughs> uh, I think uh, sorry, you man. can bring him back, though, right? Yeah, I just gotta. It takes an hour to do it. Okay, and let's see. Uh, 18 after the second bolt of lightning is doing a dash to get the hell out of there. <laughs> Orvix is uh, gonna come up. Let's see. Let's do a different route on him. Exhaustion cuts your speed in half, right? Uh, at level two, I believe. Level 1 is disadvantage on ability checks. Level 2 is half speed. Level 3 is disadvantage on attacks. I can't okay. remember what level 4 was. So that would be 30. Like feet. no speed or something. Reduced oh, to 0 yeah. or something like that. Ah, fuck. <laughs> and he trips and dies. <laughs> <laughs> Oops! <laughs> okay. There's Orvix. Make him friendly. And we'll put him back on the map. Okay. So, let's see. Yeah, Diego moved. All right. And yeah, Orvix is going to run up and he's, en he's engaged, so he would qualify for sneak attack and 
Orbix is going to swing his short sword and miss horribly and then he's going to try it again and that one was a hit and with sneak attack that one is dead and yeah Orvix would be before Diego Diego what would you like to do? <laughs> well you got one running I'm gonna let him go. I'm not running after him. That's too far. Does anybody want to give chase? No, but I'll throw an Eldritch Blast this way, since my turn is right after. Let's just see if we can, uh, you know, ping him off. Oh, okay. And the second one also missed us. It's great. Great, 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 great. All right, nothing happens. Uh, does anyone else want to try to hit him? Uh, I could probably try and poke him with fire. Then do all of two damage. He's gone. <laughs> Where is he at? He's yeah, 145 you, feet. I could. I'm, you do I two d10 damage with firebolt, right? At level five. Oh, do I? Yeah, you should. Yeah, you'd have to go in and change the cantrip, though. So just roll another d10, I suppose. There you go. He's still. He's a bit warmer than he was a turn ago, but he's gone. <laughs> yeah. Oren? Revenge! Revenge! And that actually is a hit. Dying, there we go. Stuff. And the next one, I'll target a Multag for going by. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, <laughs> come on, bro! It's not my Maybe fault. Like There's two of them. Okay. <laughs> hey, don't make me call lightning on your ass. I'll do it. I got this thing fired up, ready to go. It's all those dog jokes I kept making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is karma. <laughs> this is karma. It's an hour out of your life. It's not even a real hour. It's only a game hour. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and um, from, um, yeah, we're out of combat now, uh, nice little fight, would you like to search the ruins? Yes, I believe we would like to do so. Okay, um, there are, um, as you can see on the map, there's a, uh, an entrance there all the way to the, in the middle of the north. Um, that, that leads to a couple of rooms built into, uh, the wall, in, into the, uh, cliff walls and so forth. And... As you are exploring them, uh, you find a couple of things. Uh, you find this platter made out of electrum, 
and it's got these images of Chiltian people feasting and you find a, a death mask made out of painted gold and you find a helm and as you're holding the helm you can feel that it is indeed magical wait oh, what is this death mask okay uh, yeah it, it's um, it, it you can tell by the features and so forth and just from its age that you know it was from the time when Omu was um, inhabited and it's it's made of this painted gold and it's worth uh, 250 gold pieces uh, the platter um, it is inscribed with images and um, Kathma you can recognize that the images are feasting rituals oh and then you have this magical helm all right What what is um what do the people of Chult do perform feasting rituals for? Anything in specific, or is it just like some sort of celebration, a generic celebration they do? Uh, generic celebrations. Gotcha. Okay. Well, does anyone have the ability to figure out what this magical helm do, does? No one has detect magic. <laughs> Got Arcana. I could try. Um, uh, I have Arcana, actually. Looks magical. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, tell what the weather's going to be in the next 24 hours. <laughs> okay, uh, Bjorn, uh, you're able to study it long enough, and uh, you're pretty certain that it is a helm of telepathy. And when wearing it, you can use an action to cast Detect Thoughts. And as long as you maintain concentration, um, you can use a bonus action to send a telepathic message to the creature that you're focused on. It seems important. And the, the creature that you're focused on as a bonus action can reply telepathically. Ooh. And uh, when you're focusing on the creature with detect thoughts, uh, you can use an action to cast the suggestion spell onto that creature. Um, that's one time per day. And I'm going to throw that in the party inventory. And it is indeed considered a wondrous item. And as you start coming out, um, I'm sh 
Did, did you all split up to examine the ruins, you know, small groups? Sure. Probably. probably. Yeah, yes. At least pairs. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Um, those are... Uh, who would have went down in to examine the rooms? Let's start with that. <laughs> Um, uh, oh, uh, Orvix would have went with you. Does anyone want to volunteer? Uh, well, sure. I would imagine Tasmo went, since he wouldn't wouldn't he be the no bleh, the most knowledgeable about this kind of stuff amongst? Yeah, but Orvix is also going with whoever is with the uh, going to the room. Shouldn't we split up the people who are as knowledgeable about this in two, two different places? That's a good point. Okay, so we'll put Kathma down here. Put Bajoran over. We'll send the tank with Orvix. <laughs> if I'm the farthest away from the T-Rex, that works. And uh, Aggie is... Uh, <clears throat> you know, he's sitting there mourning the loss of thing. <laughs> and as you come out from the rooms and the rest of you are searching the stands and so forth, uh, you can hear quite the large, quite a loud dinosaur roar. And it is really, really close to you. And Kathma, you and Diego can see um, the brush and shrubbery to the. Uh, God, will you get in a square? Okay, uh, you can see the brush and the shrubbery start to move from the uh, southeast corner. And once again, uh, you hear this loud roar. And out comes this T-Rex. Same thing up to check it out. Oh, wait. <laughs> and this dinosaur um, looks a little bit different than the others that you have encountered. A, it's got feathers. <laughs> and it's not vomiting a bunch of undead? Uh, no, it's it's not. Uh, you know, it, it it looks extremely healthy compared to the zombie T Rex that you encountered. I don't like the implication there. But it is time to uh, roll initiatives again. Uh. Because you are in his home. How long has it been since the last combat? Um, I'd say 30 minutes. Not enough oh. time to have Thing back. Well, I'm not worried about Thing. I just, my, uh... Of course you're heart. not. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my call lightning has a 10 minute ex expiration date on him, so that's fine. I was having uh, to yeah, your call lightning would be gone. Okay, and oh, thing, we hardly knew you. <laughs> Oren, you're up. You see this huge dinosaur come out of the brush. Uh, and you say there's three rooms inside this place that are too small for the dinosaur to get into? <laughs> uh, yes. 
Okay, so I can go... What is my move? 25 feet for a halfling? That. Hmm... So, Bjorn and... Oh, Diego has initiative after the King of Feathers. Uh, that doesn't sound too good. Um, I'm gonna move up there. Then I'm gonna cast... or use... the range on this conjure animals thing 60 feet okay so as close as I c actually now that I know it's whatever distance I will cast the ca conjure animals charm and I want um, let's say four, uh, four beasts of challenge rating, half or lower. Four beasts of challenge rating, one half. Do I get to pick those animals, or do you pick those animals? Uh, let's see, um. Looking for the list, there's an eight, there's... You said a fourth or a half? Uh, four at a half. Four at a half. There was a wolf at, at a half, wasn't there? Let's see... Uh, uh, a warg is a half. Um, I don't even know what the hell that is. Uh, it's Isn't that a wolf no thing? Uh, let's see. Uh, you've got an ape, uh, crocodile. Uh, okay. There's an easier way to do this. And. Green shot. Eight beasts of a quarter, even, right? Uh, eight beasts of a quarter would give me wolves. That would be simple. Eight wolves. Eight wolves. That should keep the thing slightly busy for two turns. Wall of meat. Wall of meat. Yeah, form wall of meat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not wall of fire, wall of ice, none of that. No, just wall of summit meat. Wall of meat snacks. Yeah. Free meat snacks. Yeah. Like they show Diego up, you're like... The meat snack. <laughs> you summon them, you're like, hurry, jump in its mouth, distract it. Tastes like chicken. And alphabetical wolf. Eight of them, huh? It only has like four attacks, so that's about two turns worth of wading through wolves. Maybe. Two claws, a bite, a tail. And they are friendly towards you, correct? They are. Says. And where do you want them? As close to the beast as I can, in between the beast and Diego, especially.
friendly to you and your companions. Roll initiative when summoned. They obey any verbal commands that you issue to them. No action required by you. If you don't issue any commands, they defend themselves from hostile creatures, but otherwise take no actions. So, I would say... Kill the big dinosaur. And... That is eight of them. They need initiative. And I'm going to give them a group initiative. Which unfortunately was really low. <laughs> okay. Let's see. And it is going to... Come forward... And get into a square... And it's going to... To Wasn't it Moltok's turn? Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, when I yielded my turn, it just disappeared for some reason. I don't know why it did that. What the hell? You kill one imp, and all of a sudden you're banned for life. Okay, so. Um, would, it, would Entangle affect something that's... Well, he'd just save. His save would just go right by. Ah, well, I guess we'll call lightning on him, and then I'll take off running like a... So, uh... Um... Okay, well, I've got him selected, and so we're going to, uh... Control, scroll. Cast. Uh... Oh, and he failed, so... I applied the effect to me, and the damage to him. And then I am going to. Eek, eek, eek. I can move 25. I will go to there. And trample Diego. Or Orin. I think that's my turn. Orvex, get in there. I got faith in you, buddy. <laughs> uh, hmm. Yeah, Orvex is just gonna stay put. <laughs> Okay. How far am I? Uh, whoops. And this, this isn't a move, I'm just checking it. And it's unlike 90 feet, I'm well within range. I'm gonna stay where I am and chuck a fireball at this thing. Damn, a 19 is just enough to make me miss Pathfinder. <laughs> Come back to the dark side. Ab <laughs> 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 that is um, <laughs> kind of bullshit. Isn't there some sort of inspiration or something for you? I'm going to hang on to it until someone's dying. Okay, and... Uh, you see this 
silver mist start to surround the king of feathers and he disappears for a second and reappears down on the floor of the amphitheater are you shitting me this thing can cast spells <laughs> And, um, <clears throat> he's gonna try a bite at Kathma. And you roll a meat, it does nothing. A <laughs> <laughs> cast oh. wall of tofu. Well, you, you know, they got attacks. <laughs> And let's see, that is that's got to be an action. And you know, he he tries to bite Kathma, and he misses. And you see him start to turn, and. This tail is coming at you, Diego. And uh, you're able to duck, and that tail just goes right over your head. Where do you mean dinosaurs are lame? <laughs> just say it. <laughs> hey, it could crit every turn. Be grateful. No, I get it, I get it. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay, so... Can I go here to get flank? And, uh... Yeah. So then, rapier. And... Uh, where is it? There it is. Oh, good. Okay, guy. and then, uh, um, yeah, okay, I'll do an offhand with the dagger. Make sure that's on there. And then fancy footwork, run away. <laughs> Leaving Kathman to his fate. And I'm assuming you want all the wolves to move in and attack? Yep. My command was to attack the dinosaur. So we're just going to put them all around. And they would do a bite. So that's one, two, three, So we got one, two, three, yeah, four, four hits. Do they get pack tactics or anything, or is that on the bigger wolves? Okay, yes, they do get pack tactics, so... ADB. What does pack tactics do for you? Uh, Give some advantage if they've got an ally within five feet. Oh. So that's four rerolls, so. 
chances are I get one or two more. Now, are uh, they flanking? Like, does Wolf 26 flank with Wolf 12? Yeah, they get advantage for that too, I suppose. Okay, so we're up to six. So cool. I need four more for... That would be two more, right? The Who rolled the twelves? Okay, I'll give you two more. Okay, so we got one critical and seven normal. Six and seven. Those guys are handy. And then we're down to Kathma. <laughs> <laughs> and we're still Beam. not even halfway there. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Kathma will. Five, ten. Spend a bonus action to put up a shoot of faith just in case. I should have targeted myself first. He uses a spell slot. Then he will use an action to use his necrotic shot effect. So. Actually, hold on. Uh, if we should do ten feet view. Okay, so unfortunately, this also targets allies, but thankfully, it's just the wolves here. And also, yeah, sweet ten feet. Um, saves. Jesus, I targeted myself as well. Unfortunately, doesn't work. So only those who are frightened. And, um, yeah, that will be the end of his turn. And, Oren, you're up, sir. Right. Target the King of Feathers. Attack. Ooh, tonight Ooh. Tonight is my night. That. Tech number two. Bad. Hit. And five. Oh. Twenty-five. Get to where he can't bite me. Can't fit. That was a smart move. <laughs> run away! Run away! Okay, so I will move my lightning bolt to the middle of him so none of the wolves get hurt. And then, uh... Let's see... Oh, fails. Damage. Not bad. And then I will run away... A whole five. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I will try to claw my way in with everybody else. <laughs> and I think that's it. <laughs> Orvex, it's all you, man. You do this. And. Uh, Orvex is. going to step out and. Gonna try to fire a hand crossbow at the King of Feathers. 
and surprisingly uh, he did hit. And then he's retreating back to where he was. Okay. Um, again, I move ten feet forward just to put myself between the King of Feathers and the squishy. And I'm going to try Firebolt again. That's better. Okay, the King of Feathers. Uh, <clears throat> you see the, the silvery mist again. And... He's just gonna burn through all his spell slots, ain't he? He comes up. Yeah, we're going to try and bite Diego. And the legendary action does count as a normal action, right? Yep. Oh, wait. The wrong one. Ha. There we go. I'm going to uncanny dodge that. It still hit you though, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just I get half damage. <laughs> I get the feeling that's not gonna make a difference. Oh Jesus! <laughs> and let's see, biting you. Yeah, it bites you, but does not grapple you. And... Ooh. Aren't you lucky? And he is going to move forward. There's a square. There. And he's going to do a tail swipe at Bajoran. And you ready for a little bludgeoning damage there, Sheer? Bring it. And he's Yeah. All right, Diego. All right. Run up there. And rapier him. Uh, 
and dagger <laughs> hey dagger <laughs> yay so massive monster you're like stab flop and you're staring at the dagger like uh <laughs> <laughs> like Gee. Hey, this thing's got some power. <laughs> this is a big ass dagger. I just stabbed it in the nuts. It'll be part. It'll be part of my legend. It'll, it'll go down. We'll have you know Operation Druid, Honeypot, and uh, Legendary Dagger <laughs> of Feather Tyrannosaur Sling. <laughs> hey, I didn't actually sleep with the wild dogs. Okay, I distracted the wild dogs. It's, it's a completely different thing. This time, <laughs> and they always uh, embellish in the uh, tail, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. The, this is the time that Diego finally got tail. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it, well, tail missed him the first time. All right. Let's give oh, you. I got some bit that time though. Experience points for the amphitheater. And thousand each. Hey, Juicy. not bad. Less than Almost a thousand there. away. Since I have another hour on the wolves, I'll tell them to go over the wall to the next section and hunt for lizard men and eat them if they can. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. uh. Uh, that sounds like a good idea. Okay, uh, guys, do you mind if we take ten here? Sure. Sure. All right. See in a few. Yep.
Now I'm back. Okay. Well, it's time to have a shot of whiskey to remember the King of Feathers. <laughs> Two fingers for the King of Feathers? Uh, absolutely. We've been, uh, every Friday for the past month, we've been doing Facebook live streaming for a Moonshine Distillery here in Tennessee. They're doing live bluegrass concerts and we're providing the cameras and all the hardware and so forth and actually doing the show and out of four shows three of them at the end of it they've given us uh, six packs of whiskey <laughs> nice. so, uh, nothing like free booze and getting paid overall <laughs> You with the stuff? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. Ah, you're I, all right. Uh, I tried to slip a pizza into the oven while on the break, and uh, it's been back. preheating. So, and I just beeped, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Here we go. Yeah. All, right, All right, not a problem. Rock and roll. So anyway, uh, you defeated the King of Feathers, and uh, he had one more trick up his sleeve, which was a, he can vomit a swarm of insects. <laughs> so he had one that can vomit zombies and one that can vomit insects. I'm afraid to see what the next one can. <laughs> Uh, dragons or something. And if you noticed, I'm, I'm not upset about not killing anyone because, hey, there's more chances, so. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Well, that's one on the familiar, though. Uh, absolutely. Oh my god, let well, it go. Well, yeah, no, technically that was all <laughs> that. That familiar was used up played out. He needed a new one. <laughs> and would you all like to uh, take a short rest so you can get Thing back? <laughs> yeah, short rest sounds good. Now when yep. the wolves I got went hurt over the wall, well. did, can we see, it looks on the map, like on the map we can see that from where we are? The staircase nearby? Yeah, you sure can. So since I had time left on the wolves, tell the wolves to go, you know, go over the wall there to the next section and hunt for lizard men. And they have great smell, so maybe they could find them. Thank and you. when when they run over the the wall, do we see anything happen to them? They anything funny happen to them on the top of the wall? Uh, no. Uh, they jump over or they go up the stairs and across the wall and nothing's happening and when they get down to the other side naturally they're out of your view but uh, you can you can hear the barking and the howling and they take off uh, you can hear them moving away from where you're at they're moving south cool 
that was an idea that struck me they can smell better I, when a druid turns into something does he smell better too uh, his nose would smell his odor wouldn't change <laughs> okay so <laughs> my, my point is is if we're being watched and we can't see who's watching us assuming it's not magical if he turns into something with better eyesight, a, a falcon can see something, everything, for two miles. This place is only a thousand feet wide, right? Uh, yeah, roughly. So, if Moltak turns into something with keen eyesight, and with a, from a good vantage point, he might be able to spot anything moving in the entire place. And see lizards, see where what, they are. What level do I have to be? I thought I had to be fifth level to wild shape into something that flies. And you are fourth fifth level, level, right? What are we? Fifth. Are fifth? Yeah. Yeah, you're fifth. Yeah. Oh, oh. Well, hold on, let me do. It. Yeah, I believe that's right, isn't it? Do I have my head completely on my ass? All right, hold on here. Now you don't want to fly because the gargoyles will nail you, but... I mean, I could... Yeah. Um, Go to the top of the nearest tall building and just look around. Like a gargoyle? Um, uh, yeah, so I mean, I've got... Uh, looking in my repertoire. Uh, no. No. Um... Crab, a bat, badger, weasel, spider, rat, lizard, frog, deer. I got a or a dionysius. A dionysius. Um, by by this time in the jungle, you would have seen some sort of uh, flying bird. So uh, I've got flying monkey. Uh, that would work as well, but I don't know about its eyesight. <laughs> yeah, Falcon is um, CR zero, and it's in under Dragon Heist. So you're good. Uh, but yeah, uh, turning into a Falcon, and you know you can fly somewhat, but you tend to stay low as to not trigger the gargoyles. And. Okay. Uh, you can see with your eyesight. Let me find a token. So I should apply that effect to myself? Uh, you don't have to. Okay. We just uh, all understand that I'm a falcon now. Yes. Okay. And in the, uh, the circle to the east... Um, a massive stone S. Yes, uh, you can see Young T, the snake people. Y you can see several of them on the street. Um, unfortunately, you're not able to see what's giving you the feeling that you're being watched. Hmm. But you do know that there are Yun T in the uh, circle. Now, is anybody uh, is anybody wearing the that helm of tele telepathy right now, or or how am I com or do I just have to report back? Yeah, you'll have to report back. Okay, I will report back. Hey, there's snake people in a big call or a big I don't know what the hell that thing is a big circle. Uh on the eastern part of the city. Cool. But I don't know what's watching us. Do I see any other signs of, uh, like, uh, anything else that might lend itself to being a temple? Like, um... Ah, uh, yes, you do. Right on the other side, and that would be number seven. Right there. Where are my numbers? It looks it looks awfully templeish. <laughs> south of where I 
Uh, yeah, it, it's pretty much on the other side of the stairwell. So I don't see anybody walking around in the streets outside of that big circle. Uh, no, you do not. Uh, however, you do see some wildlife, a couple of dogs, uh, maybe a couple of uh, small velociraptors. But do I see the wolves where they went? Uh, yes, uh, you can. I'll even put the um, token on the map. Uh, the wolves are right down around the flooded area in that middle column. And okay. it really looks like they're headed east. Okay. I wonder if unleashing the wolves was a good idea because if the wolves attack the one T then they're going to know that there's I mean there's not a lot of wolves around here so I, I, I don't know I don't know if it'll put them on their guard I guess like they'll start patrolling the streets looking for us so. yeah, the dogs uh, are here and somebody's watching us so yeah that ship sailed I guess yeah. alright anyway so I will return and retain my falcon shape until uh I need to I only get two a day, is that right? Two expenditures a day. I two per know. short rest or long rest? Um, let me check. So I can do challenge rating half or lower. twice uh, you regain expended uses fit short or long rest okay yeah okay so if you fly around and then take the short rest with us you'll have still have two yes so yeah so I will revert back into handsome druid form and uh, and we'll count that as happening before the short rest yes Exactly. And go, are you here? Yep. Uh, I'll. When the uh, when Orvex isn't around, I'll mention to Diego. Now that we have a helmet that can tell someone's thoughts, maybe somebody ought to ask Oryx a few questions about that uh, lich lady, while someone else is checking to see whether he's lying about it. And who were you planning on wearing said helmet? I don't know. <laughs> Kathma is probably too righteous to, to, to partake in this particular adventure. Uh, uh, so how about you ask the questions. I'll take the helmet, put it on, and uh, try to figure read Oravex's mind and see if he's telling the truth about uh, the Lich Lady. Alright, are, are like we in a position to just start questioning him, though? Well, you could just like, ask him, because just... he had time with her. You could just strike up a conversation while we're resting, or whatever. Did we tell him that we met her? We did, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I believe you did. All right. Well, let's do it. Where uh, are are we heading? What direction are we heading? Are we just going across the wall now? We will. Or are we just questioning them while during the rest? could do it uh, as long as it wouldn't disturb the rest I'd just say do it now but if it, it would disturb the rest we can just save it for later in the day uh yeah we can go ahead and do it now if you'd like sure I'll put on this helmet hopefully it's is what it says it is and out of the way 
but within range of Orvex. And I'll just watch Diego go over, and when he starts talking to him, I'll use the helmet on Orvex. Yeah, so uh, strike up a little small talk at first, like while we're like you know just actually resting and you know eating or something, and I'll ask him. Uh, it's like, so how long did you say that you've uh, you've known you know known uh, uh, Valandra? Was that it? Valandra yeah. Shadow Mantle. Uh, it, he goes, uh, you know, I only met her uh, really the one time when uh, she was. Uh, you know, seeing this expedition off. How'd she come across to you? Is she like a fair person to deal with, you'd say, or? Uh, you know, uh, I would say that she's probably fair, but I would not want to get on her bad side. Oh uh, yeah, what would, you, what would you, what would you say that? Like, what, did something happen? Um... Well, uh, uh, you know, she's very powerful in the uh, Order of the Red Wizards. Oh, so she's a wizard herself? Or she just has influence with the wizards? Um, I can't say if she's a wizard herself, but yes, she does have some influence. Uh, you know, there's... There's rumors that, you know, she's not really an elvish woman, but a lich. Wow. I've heard about those. And she is uh, very curious, and, you know, that was the purpose of her mission, was to find out what's causing this thing, and to protect it until she got here. Do you know why she's interested in in this? Like what kind of I don't what she have plans a, to do with it? I I don't have a clue. That's above my pay grade. Does the helmet detect any thoughts that are like he's lying or uh, of other things? You are detecting uh, he's not trying to cover up any thoughts, and for as far as you can tell, he's being honest. Okay. Does he believe that she's a lich? Or is he just telling us the story that people believe? Uh, he is telling you the story that people believe. And, you know, if you ask him about it, uh, he's like, I, I, you know, it's it's all rumor. I I can't tell you if she's a lich or not. I've never seen her be a lich. And like I said, I was only around her the one time. And the helmet is detecting no lies. All right. Cool. I'll put the helmet away and then walk out and give him the thumbs up out of the view of Orvix. And then tell him what I that I didn't sense any subterfuge and he believed everything he told him. And we'll continue the short rest. Okay. Um, do you want to continue going up and around, or do you want a chance crossing the wall? Up and around, if, if it's possible. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, you are able to go up and around. And as you're coming down, uh, you know, the path right beside the wall is uh, covered with trees. And, you know, you're going to sneak down and actually take the street. And you see something. Um, 
near the base of the cliff, uh, you see a 15 foot tall obelisk of cracked stone and it's draped with these vines and it's got black moss on it and behind it um, you see a dark passageway obscured by these withered creeping vines hanging down from it and you can see a second smaller tunnel burrowing into the base of a cliff at the east and I think I want to shrunk down significantly for you and this will take a minute these are uh, <laughs> this module's got some huge ass images Obviously not where we want to be right now, though. There's Bajorn and Kathma. And, um, I didn't cast any spells, so I, um, I didn't actually need the short rest. Can I have cast and gotten back, um, thing? Uh, yes, I was just getting ready to ask you, thing was an imp, right? Yep. friendly and on the map but as you can see you've got two entrances uh, although one is partially obscured by vines and the other one is mostly clear but you can see a tunnel dug into part of the cliff face And is that a tent there, or is that... Uh, that uh, is the, the 15 oh, foot the tall obelisk. Is there writing and, on the obelisk? And you can also see, now naturally this is no different than following the cliff walls. Uh, above you, uh, you can see three stone gargoyles. And... Uh, yes, uh, the obelisk does have a message carved on it in common. And, uh, you can see that, um, also at the base of the obelisk um, it's damaged uh, the stone is cracked uh, it, it looks very flimsy uh, you know it, it wouldn't take too much effort if you decided to push it over but the uh, the word read the words read fear the night when the forsaken one seizes death's mantle and the seas dry up and the dead rise and I, Aseric, the eternal, reap the world of the living. Those who dare enter, take heed. The enemies oppose. One stands between them. In the darkness it hides. Don the mask or be seen. Speak no truth 
to the doomed child and the keys turn on the inside only. Well, okay. Crypto. Very. Mm. I have no. I don't know. Last, maybe it's a death mask we picked up. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. That's, I guess right now. The rest of it don't mean shit to me. Seize is dismount and seize right. Okay, so the Forsaken one is Razmisi, maybe. Seize's death mantle is the soul thingy. Seas dry up and the dead rise. Well, that's happening now. I, Aseric the Eternal, reap the world of the living. Okay, so some God of the Dead, something. Those who dare enter take heed. The enemies oppose. Yeah, the bad guys don't want us to do whatever we gotta do. One stands between them. Maybe Rosneezy, I don't know. In darkness it hides. So the soul monger forgy thing, whatever it is, is in darkness, so that makes sense. Don the mask or be seen. Oh. Maybe we're being scried now because somebody isn't marrying, wearing the death mask. But nobody got any hint that the death mask was magical, right? Correct. Maybe it's, another, maybe it's another mask they're talking about. Speak no truth to the doomed child. Doomed child. No idea. The key turn on the inside only. Well, aren't the stone blocks the keys? But they turn on the inside only. I have no idea what that means. So maybe it's like further in is what it opens, not the door is here. Well, looking at the door, is there any key holes on this door? Uh, I'll have let's a thing see. over and take a look at the door so we don't have to get too close. Um, yeah, thing going to the door. Um, you, you see the slab of worked stone, and the edges are marked by relief carvings of grinning skulls and you see four lines engraved at the center of the slab cross one another to form a star with both ends of each line marking the location of a cubed shaped, cubed shaped cavity cut into the door there are eight of them in all Eight, not nine. Hmm. So this must be the ninth or something then. So this okay. is the final one. Yeah. Yeah, because we thought to that to too, ninth. right? We saw God had that note at the beginning of the session, and it was kind of like this is the last place we need to go, but we didn't know where exactly it was. But it had an obelisk in front of it. We Which is why I said when we got here, this is the last place we want to be, right? And checking the uh, the indentions on the door, uh, 
it looks like it would it well it doesn't look like it will fit the stone cube that you currently have But we only have one stone cube, right? Even though we visited two temples? One temple. Only the frog is is the, the only temple we've gone to. Oh, so the amphitheater was just a bonus? Yeah. Yes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're missing number eight, but we haven't looked everywhere. And so we don't need a ninth, we just need the other seven stones we come here we slap them in yeah so yeah we need let's mark on a map mark this on our map and then uh let's try to head to a place to get the remainder of the well, do we want to blocks do we want to at least surveil what's in these caves or no I think going to the other your temples might give us more insight on what to expect in here. Okay. So, we're going south. Yep, we'll skip this map and move on. And I'm going to put a T token up there for the Tomb of the Nine Gods. Yeah, I think being safer is probably better. Okay, give me just a second. Okay. Pull up. I didn't expect y'all to make it this far tonight. <laughs> Well, was the Feathered King supposed to hold us up for long? Or were we supposed to look in the Ninth Shrine? I figured he would take a little bit longer. Okay.
And I'm going to put you on the map to the shrine. Wow, that grid is really off. Done, you man. <clears throat> Fantasy Grounds doesn't do well with grids. No, it doesn't. And Kafma, let's see if that's just Of course, you know, some of it's also due to the artist. <laughs> well yeah, no, I'm just saying that the <coughs> That's close enough. Yeah, I got some of those maps off of DM skilled for the encounters that weren't included in Lost Mines. And the first one that I put together the horses are the wrong size because it doesn't seem to fit the default fantasy grounds grid and I don't know how to mess with it. So that's going to be fun. Uh, after the game I can tell you real quick how to solve some of that. Thank you. Okay, and you've got the map and the description on this one. Um, you see these two obelisks and there's carvings of monkeys hanging by their tails and um, you can see the broken walls surrounding the shrines and past the obelisk is a courtyard filled with horse tails and arium lilies and you see these five archways open into the darkness at the base of the ruin. And mounted above the central arc is a stone plaque with the inscription, Better to be Wongo's friend than his enemy. Wongo. And you do recognize the name as being one of the nine trickster gods. Come on, you're up. That's it. <laughs> Pull the pin on Kathman, throw him through the door. <laughs> Why do I gotta go through the door? <laughs> That's not fair. So Frogma was the brave one. What is the, uh... Wongu was the stew monster that stole the water pail. Well, that's helpful. Then the thing is... Check it out. Okay, so what are we doing? Um, so, I guess looking through this really quick. Um, stole the water pail, and I believe Moa, the Draculi, betrayed him because Moa couldn't lie and told Uptau that Wango stole the water pail, so they became enemies after that. Um, and it says we're better to be Wango's friend than his enemy. And we have... Oh, God. Maybe it means friend, you go straight in and straight out as opposed to approaching him from behind or from the side or something. Are those, uh, 
Are those cobwebs? Yes, they are cobwebs. But he, he was also a, um, like, you know, a really trickstery thief that managed to, managed to steal from Booktow. Maybe he. I don't know. But we don't see from our vantage point any cube in there. Just a plaque on the wall. Uh, not from this distance. Okay, and a pedestal with a star shape on it. Or something with a star shape on it. Well, alright. I'll have Thing turn into a spider and walk on the wall. Halfway up the wall. Slowly into the chamber. And give me just a second. I'll say I'm sending uh, Thing in on the wall. Walking on the wall. I'll tell you what I see when he gets in there. Okay. Uh, thing is walking. And that goes to B. Um, the thing sees a ten foot tall stone statue of an evil looking monkey balancing on its tail atop the stone dais in the middle of this 20 foot tall chamber and the statue's limbs are uh, spread out the hands and feet are cupped and on the wall behind um, you see the sculpted relief showing a monkey like creature tearing into a giant serpent and you see inscriptions are carved above and below the the relief and four mask a painted stone protrude from the walls and they depict the heads of a lion a zebra a boar and a vulture Tell them what thing sees. Is um is a Sioux monster a monkey like creature? Or do we not know? Uh so I'm seeing a lot of monkeys here and I'm starting to think. Uh yes, a, a Sioux monster is a monkey like creature. Great. Um and what sort of creature is a is is a Wanko. Jaculi? Jaculi, Jaculi, Moa the Jaculi. A Jakuli is a... It's a 15 foot long snake. 15 foot long snake, okay. It's not the anim animals uh, he, he described to us, right? No. Looks like a boar and a lion. What is Wongo? Is Wongo a... a He's the monkey. monkey? Yeah, hey, Wongo. Wongo is the monkey. Better to be his friend than his enemy. Well, a lion would be the enemy of a monkey. Um, a boar, a lion, and what were the other two again? Uh, you've got a um, a lion, a zebra, a boar, and a vulture. Um, 
Well, if it's the Lion King, the boar is his friend, right? Um, <laughs> Bastard. Uh, uh, but maybe the zebra, because it's the only thing that won't eat a monkey? I mean, I don't know if boars eat monkeys, but vultures also don't eat monkeys, right? Unless they're already dead. Me. And uh, from Thing's position, uh, he can see uh, the, protru the protrusions right there are actually the stone masks that are carved into the walls. But you can see the eye holes are empty. They're, they're open holes where someone could look through. Okay, so someone could walk down this hallway, look through the mask, at the monkey. Oh, I see. Yeah, alright, alright, I get it. So which one is which? The lion, zebra, boar, and vulture in left that and right? That is lion... Or zebra and vulture. And the monkey statue is balanced on his tail with his hands cupped? Yes. Hands um, and feet are cupped. Hands and feet spread out, right? Cupped. Um, here's an idea. I'll have Thing um, crawl into the room and then up and look down into the cups of the statue. Does it have any water in his hands? Uh, no. Didn't the the Wongo steal a pail of something? What yes. was the what was in the pail? Water? He stole a pail of water from Uptow. Because Uptow, you know, no longer blessed the uh, Chol or whatever the, the legend was. Uh, well if it's still water, maybe it's thirsty, we pour water into the cupped hands. That doesn't say anything about the masks right. though. Mm. Yeah, I don't know what the masks do. So you said we can uh, walk up to the uh, side passages and and like look through the mask. Yeah, you sure can. Symbol? At the statue, yes. Maybe we have to pick. I don't know. Pick pick an animal that would be a friend to a monkey and then look through its mask. Do we know if he like? if any of the, the animals like represent the other gods were any of the gods oh. friend uh, Wongo yeah that's what I was thinking that's, that's a good question yeah um, the legends didn't really say much of it I remember it basically being a self contained tale um, each of the uh, like uh, nine trickster gods have a um, so if someone they interacted with so for example Obolaka wanted to make a like a food or a brew or stew with all the good stuff in it and then Ijin snuck in recklessness into the stew and ruined it and you know Uptown hated it and so on forth. It comes in pairs. The only exception is Unk which is the flail snail whose only ta part of her tail was that she she uh she unburrowed herself from the earth and her Shell blinded Uptow, I think. Told the truth and turned in Wongo. Uh, Moa told the truth and turned in Wongo. And oh, what, Moa is a Draculi, which is a giant 15 foot snake. Correct. Okay, well, that doesn't help us because there's no snakes. Um, hmm. Okay. 
it, what about if it's something like an enemy of my enemy is my friend? You know, we pick in an animal that's an enemy of, of snakes. Maybe, maybe that. I don't know. I think zebra's the most non-hostile towards a monkey, right? A vulture might attack a a, a snake, monkey. though. A vulture might attack a snake too. Yeah. Birds are. I think birds are natural predators of snakes, right? But I don't know if vultures actually hunt like living beings. Yeah, I don't know. Generally depicted as scavengers. Okay. Well, we know the lion and probably the boar. Boars can get, I don't know, aggressive, right? If they're territorial, so maybe right. we exclude those, and it's either the, the zebra or the vulture. Vulture is a meat eater, right? So it's it's by definition more adversarial to a monkey than a zebra, because a vulture would eat a monkey, but a zebra would never eat a monkey under any circumstance. Well, probably not answering. That's that's also true. But uh, I don't know. It's one of the two. We could like talk circles all day, but we gotta pick one of them too. Uh, should we have Thing check out the zebra first, maybe? His face is way too small. I'm sure it wouldn't activate for an imp face. Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, thing can't look through. <laughs> yeah, I, I see that coming a mile away. Come on, Kathma, you're the one with faith. Oh, yeah. Well, faltering faith, but yes, he he does step up, and you know, after much discussion with the group. Um, he decides to go for the closest one, which is the zebra. Starts walking in. I'm going to move to where I can see him so that I can uh, throw healing at him if I need to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and there's an inscription above the mask that says, my only <laughs> friend starved to death. And oh, as... There's more info. <laughs> as you are looking through the mask, um, you see a ray of blue light falling onto the right foot of the statue. Oh, we each have to pick one. And then then all four of its limbs are Well, well, at the very least there's more inscriptions, right? Yeah, right. we should probably check the other uh masks. So I don't die, I don't get poisoned, I don't get trapped in here. There's no spikes impaling me, the walls don't close on me, no boulder fall on me. I'm good. All right. Yeah, you did not die. <laughs> Kathma's going to walk out and, and share where he's learned with the group. And he's going to go check out the vulture side. We use arrow keys. No, I can't. I'm just going to skip ahead, just... You know, if I need to stop in a certain score, just stop me. Okay, uh, nothing happens, and the inscription above this mask reads, One of the others has no friends. And as you're looking through the mask, you see a ray of blue light falling onto the left hand of the statue. Kathma returns to share the piece of information, and the guinea pig continues to the boar. 
50-50, and I get the feeling you chose. Okay. Um, the inscription above this mask reads, The vulture is lucky to be alive. And the ray of blue light falls upon the left foot of the statue. Oh, I see what this is. Okay, all right, all right. So it's, all right, okay. Kevin walks out. Blah, 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 blah. Hope I don't die. Towards the lion. And you're not dead yet. <laughs> uh, this inscription reads, I ate one of the boar's friends. And... The ray of blue light falls onto the right hand of the statue. Got it figured out yet? Uh, one second, I'm typing it in. <laughs> okay, so these are the four things. Vulture uh, claims that one of the others has no friends. The boar says uh, the vulture was lucky to be alive. Lion has ate one of the boar's friends, and the zebra said, My only friend starved to death. So, zebra's friend cannot be the vulture because he's alive. And it cannot be the lion because he just ate the boar. Right? So the boar is Zebra's friend. But I don't know what the question is. Uh, since the boar is the Zebra's friends, um, Vulture's claim that one of the other has no friends applies to only himself or the lion. Oh, it, it probably is maybe the, the boar, because the lion ate one of the uh, boar's friends. Maybe he was his only friend. Yeah, because doesn't... Do, didn't the lion say the vulture's lucky to be alive might imply that they're friends? No, no, no the boar said, said that. Oh, oh okay. Said okay. Vulture's lucky to be alive. Um, and, um, you know... Zebra's only friends starve to death. So, Zebra is the one with no friends, actually. And, um... Wow, that's confusing. Okay. Zebra's only friends starve to death. The lion ate one of the boar's friends, so that wasn't a friend. And the boar said the luck, the vulture is lucky to be alive. The vulture is also not the zebra's friend. So the zebra's friend is the boar. Wait, is there a question that we're supposed to be answering with this? Because otherwise, this know. makes no sense. who who is Wongo's friend? Right. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta figure so out. Maybe who... maybe Wongo applies in this group, and in, uh, out of the four, we just gotta figure out who, which one is Wongo's friend, and then we put on that mask. Yeah, I think so too. I'm having a hard time following like the logic, but the uh, premise so we I'm just getting. Look through all of the masks, and uh, okay. well, Kathma just looked through all of the masks, and nothing bad happened at any. Um. Out of character for a second. Uh, you were correct that you got to pour water into one of the statue's cupped hands or feet. And then when the blue light hits it, it will turn it into the cube or something. To, or to fall from to, the sky. Or... To figure out okay. which is the correct one, you've got to solve the riddle of who is Wongo's friend. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so... Let's just start filling this out one by one. Um, Zebra's friend is 
the boar because it can't be the lion or it, and it can't be the vulture and um, now the zebra has no friend because it's only friend starved to death. Which is probably the boar, right? Which is, which is the boar, yeah. Which so the say. lion ate the zebra. Zebra was boar's friend. Boar starved to death. And uh, vulture. Yeah, so, but who who is? The vulture has no friends? No, he says one of the others. Lion probably has no friend. I mean, he just ate the boar and zebra. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Or... The lion is one of the boar's friends, not the boar. Or would it be the boar there, since it's... the lion since the, the lion ate it? Yeah, the, the vulture. vulture. It has to be the vulture, right? If, if, if yeah. you look at this thing right there. Um, yeah, because uh, boar, boar and zebra are both friends. Um, the lion ate one of boar's friend, which is um, the zebra. And um, yeah. Then the boar starved to death, and the vulture is lucky to be alive. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's got to be the vulture, right? Yeah, lucky. Uh, yeah, and lion has no friends, and lucky. So the only. Only one remaining is Wango and Vulture as a combination. Okay, so we find out. So what? What? Uh, the, so we pour water in that hand or foot or whatever the uh, in the left hand. Was? Left hand. Left hand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. You you pour a pint or more into the statue's cup left hand and suddenly by um, by magic a puzzle cube appears on the head of the statue and um, who's pouring the water? Kathma? Yes, the guinea pig will pour the water. Anyone else in there with him? Well, somebody has to look through the mask, and then somebody has to pour the water, so it has to be two people, right? I guess I'll look through the mask. Or wait, wrong, wrong, wrong. wrong one. Wrong side. There you go. Through Vulture... Okay. Um, Kathma, you hear this snarling, disembodied voice say, Take the prize and curse your friends, or fight my children to claim it. What is your choice? Oh, oh, oh Kathma's not scared of you. <laughs> well, it looks like my choice is made for me. He'll take you all on. But yeah, Kathma would rather choose to uh, fight his children than curse his friends. Or fight uh, uh, Wongo's children, I should say. Okay, so let's see. You did not take the cube. And Okay. Okay. <laughs> Are you laughing? <laughs> yes, I am. I am laughing. Okay. Uh, you choose to fight the friends, and uh, as you're looking around, waiting for Wongo's children, uh, 
portcullises close. God damn it. <laughs> and let's see. Portcullises. Is there one in B? <laughs> okay. Uh, Port Collis's slam shut. They fall down out of the ceiling trapping whoever's in one of the four corridors with the mask. So, Yay. Diego, you are trapped. <laughs> and, okay, I got an encounter somewhere. And they go into the combat tracker. <laughs> Sorry. Nah, you good. I gotta stop the maniacal laughter. And you, Kathma, see four Sioux monsters materialize. They are clinging to the statue like startled children clinging to a protective parent. And they leap down and, you know, instantly they are hostile and it's time to roll for initiative they look so screwed up And everyone's rolled initiative, and Diego, from behind you, you hear the portcullis slam shut, and through the mask, you can see the four Sioux monsters. Is Kasma also trapped? Yeah, we all, all the entryways got portcullises down. All the uh, Kathmas. It's all but Kathmas. Oh. Yeah, it's the other four that are blocked. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I'm gonna run to the end. Uh, tokens are not locked, but uh, and you're locked. All right. So, and I'll use my bonus action to dash, I guess, and get right there. I was like, uh, someone with muscles, lift this up, get me out of here. And, I don't know, I'm gonna, t I'll try to lift it up too, even though, probably won't work. Um, so just a strength check? Um, mm -hmm. let's see, um, yeah, a strength check is not going to do it. Uh, I can't like squeeze through here too either, right? It's it's definitely too too small. Do -do -do -do. Shit! They have split this up over three different s story pages. Surprise. 
Um, yeah, um, each portcullis weighs approximately 600 pounds, and it can be lifted by one or more characters with a combined strength score of at least 20. Well, then I need somebody with at least 12. Uh, so I guess to hold my action to help somebody lift this. <laughs> okay. So, um, you said you need at least 12. I only have an 8. <laughs> so it doesn't really do much good. I don't really have a spell that I can help you with either. I thought maybe if I got a... Um, I can call lightning in there and, and mess you up. So... <laughs> <laughs> Turn to a gorilla or something. I, I, yeah. look, I don't have that. I don't have that uh, uh, wild shape yet. Uh, all my wild shapes, like I can turn into a velociraptor. Um, yeah, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any good spells that can help. So I guess I will move. I guess I'll move there and then start heading in to fight these. And this isn't open, right? This is like correct. It's not open. It's not open. Okay, so like I can't do call lightning or can I do moonbeam if it's not. Uh, I'm trying to think of it. Um, I guess I can cast. Does he know good? Shit. Man, I got yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, these these things are fairly small. Uh, how about entangle? Can I cast entangle? Yeah, I sure think. can. Okay. So that's a. Uh, um, so I select all four of them, right? That's correct. And then, uh, entangle is a, uh, 20 foot square, 20 foot on a side, right? So. Yeah, you can get all four of them. Like that? Yep. And then, uh, open this, and I'm going to cast entangle. And then I am going to just apply the effect, right? Oh, that two is. Of are, two of them are now restrained. I guess that's progress. And then uh, uh, Orin. Orin, feel free to uh, save me from myself. No good line of sight, I'll tell you that much. Um, probably get him out by burning a spell. Something new. Thirty-foot cube. Wisdom saving. I don't know what their wisdom saving would be. I can actually shoot them in there. I go before Kathma. Hmm. great stuff going on. Alright, um, I'm gonna do a hypnotic pattern. It's a 30 foot cube. Can I uh, throw that in the far back wall, the center of it, so that 
15 feet away, it only nabs the four zoo yeah, monsters? I'd, I'd let you do it. Okay. Then... Two... Four... Incapacitated. People can move through other people, right? Yes. I'm going. Not. It's a dash. That's my turn. Okay. And let's see. Entangle, it's an action to free. And... Sue Monster 8 is no longer restrained and he's gonna come forward and ooh, ooh, ooh. That's got to be an action. Yeah, it takes an action to free yourself from Entangle. Yeah, if it was a bonus action, it would say bonus. So otherwise, I'm going to count it as an action. And things already went. Sue Monster. However, <laughs> uh, Sue Monster 4 who is not entangled. He is free. And Okay, Kathma, you see the Sioux monster look at you and you feel something attacking your mind. That's not good. And, ooh, you failed. <laughs> um, you feel, I, I don't even know how to describe a psychic crush. <laughs> I just feel really sad. <laughs> With damage. <laughs> and you're stunned for one round. And number three is no longer entangled and he's gonna come down. It's still incapacitated though. Ah, that's right. So he would also be entangled as well.
Seventeen is incapacitated. Uh, Orbix. Uh, yeah. We're gonna do. A dash in and Kathma, you are stunned for a round. And Bajorn, you're up. But What is what has to be done to get the portcullis open? Uh, uh, you and Diego have got to have a combined strength of twenty. A combined strength of twenty. What, uh, Diego? What's your strengths? Eight. I need a twelve. I have a sixteen. And That's more than a twelve. Kathma, you would get a saving throw at the end of your turn. Of which you succeeded, so you are no longer stunned next round. Alright, so I'm going to go over here and help get this portcullis open. Okay, so you all do manage to get the portcullis open. And I'm going to slide. So, Diego, you're good. That was your move and your action, so we're back to Diego now. Alright. Alright, well then, I'll take off. Go here. Um... I guess I'll just use my bonus action to dash so I can get here. Uh, well, actually, I'll stay here. But, uh, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'll stay there. Uh, and I'll attack. Uh, no. Uh, so then I will use uh, Fancy Footwork to back up five feet, and then that'll be it. Well, I am going to cast my go-to Moonbeam with a five-foot radius. All right. All right. Uh, five-foot radius. 40 foot high cylinder, centered on point within range. Um, I will put it right there. You should hit those three guys and avoid calf mode. Right. Okay. I will cast that. Fail. They'll put the effect on me. And I will damage them. For nine points each, because they're a little bunch shit. And then, uh. Oren. Oren, feel free to. Uh. The hallway's a little blocked at the moment. Move up five feet. I do not have a clear shot. We'll have thing fly over and do the help action on Sue Monster Eight. Give someone advantage at some point.
5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And I'll have it fly out of the way to avoid any lightning. <laughs> and I will hold an action to shoot Eldritch Blasts if my line of sight to a monster happens to clear, but it probably won't. And that's my turn. Okay. Uh... So Monster 8 is going to step down 5 feet and it's going to peer around the corner at Diego and he's going to try a psychic crush and Diego fails. Can I, uh, yeah, I should be able to uncanny dodge that, right? Yes, for damage. Yeah. Damage at least you can. Yeah. Reduce some damage. And. There you go. And you're stunned for one minute. Wait, a minute? Not a round? Holy moly. Yeah, it's a minute. And things already went. <laughs> Sue Monster 4. <laughs> Is going to climb over... No, he's not. He is going to come down behind Kathma. He is not incapacitated. And we're going to try a psychic crush on Moltak. Ah! And he succeeded. Also, I think uh, Orin's uh, held action, reaction rather goes off, right? I don't think I have a line of sight through two people. Oh. I mean, they get they get cover, so they get increased AC, but I think you can still target them. Right? Uh, yeah, you should be able to. Okay. So... If it's half then, cover, it's just bad and Disadvantage? Minus no, half cover is minus two, and then, yeah. like, three quarters cover is minus five depending on GM, uh, whichever one GM wants to use. Uh, yeah, in this case, when there's two people in front of you, we'll do minus two. When there's three people, it's minus five. Four people, you got full cover. Okay. So, minus two. And Eldritch Blast. The miss... Eldritch Blast number two. Oh no. That's a very miss. <laughs> <laughs> I think you shot Moltak in the ass with that one. <laughs> hey, these things happen, don't they, Moltak? Yeah, what the hell? He's used to it since the dog uh, confrontation. It, does the situation seem familiar to you? Do I need, do I need to kill <laughs> thing again? Do I need to... Did you not learn your lesson last time? <sighs> okay, and let's see. Uh, he's still incapacitated. He doesn't get a saving throw on the incapacitation, right? Uh, no. He has okay. to be shaken awake or taken damage. So, he's entangled. Same with that one. Uh, well, he Orbix. Took from, he took damage from the moonbeam. Yeah. The moonbeam would have uh, unincapacitated him. Aha, so. Let's go back up. To so you're saying the druid basically killed me? Yeah, basically. <laughs> Squinty eyes. That's a habit. <laughs> well, let's. 
once you've killed the familiar, then you know you can't go bad. You, go big or go home. <laughs> so now you got to start working. Once on you have to taste for blood. Yeah, you got to start working on the other party members. That druid is a dirty dog. Remember? Yeah. There you okay, go. backing up to that. number three. Uh, we'll do the save, and he is free. And it's going to come down. Eighteen. Is still entangled. And Orvix is going to swing at eight. And he hit eight. And he's gonna come up and take his second attack at 18. And Kathma. <laughs> Kafma, Kafma doesn't like these things, so he's gonna attack. Put a sword and attack. He will hexblade curse this one. I'm gonna take this. Buy this. I'm gonna buy this. And he will attack. Um, now, I believe Diego is stunned, so I don't get advantage, right? Yeah, I'm stunned currently. Okay. So he would just attack. Why am I rolling with advantage still? Uh, it, it's... Uh, don't worry about it. We'll just count it. Okay. Um, alright, that sounds great. And... I will apply the effects of one smite, because... I'm a paladin, if you guys forgot. <laughs> and here is my damage roll. Then he will heal for five because he killed the thing. Next is the curse. And he's going to move over uh, here. Is this a square I can stand in? Uh, yes. Alright, he goes over there. Guy final. Not that I can do a whole lot. <laughs> I think I can get there. And I don't really have a line of sight on anything, so. You can use your action to move if you wanted to get further in. Yeah, you can dash. Fuck it then, I'll dash. And I guess... Just for shits and giggles, all action surge, like... There you go. Get him. Oh! The Sumar Su 3 has the Entangled still on it, really quickly. Ah, oh, well then I'll fucking go hit that one then. Okay, that works, yeah. Get him. Oh, good yeah. swing. So I'm stunned, so do I just get to save? Ah, uh, yes. And...
And yep. you're still stunned. <laughs> All right, stuff. So I can move through Diego's square, right? Correct. I will move over to there, into the room to get the hell out of the way. And then... If I can move this thing over in such a way that it's not going to hurt any of my buddies. Because he's the last one left, right? Yeah. That is correct. Okay, so he gets a save. Oop. He fails, thank you. And he gets... Obliterated. Big smear. I believe I've vindicated myself for the debacle with the familiar. <laughs> so... <laughs> Ah, uh, too funny. All right. Um, this, uh, the puzzle cube has a carving of Wongo. And this is your second of nine puzzle cubes. Uh, let's picture or eight. that. And it is in the party sheet now. And let's award some experience points. Not enough. Womp womp. And... Okay. Um, out of character, out of game, just so you know what you were dealing with. Had you poured water into one of the other hands, it would have boiled out and one to three steam methods would have appeared. Which, uh, at the same time, um, if Kathma would have chosen just to grab the cube, um, the portcullises would have slammed shut. Uh, the Sioux monsters would have appeared and um, Diego would have had to make a uh, constitution saving throw if he would have failed for the next 24 hours he would have been a vulture. Oh no. <laughs> That's really nasty. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And gentlemen, this is a uh, great stopping point for this week. All right. Uh, All right, sounds good. Same time next week. Same time okay. next week. All okay. right. Same. Can't uh, wait to be beat on by monsters and T-Rexes and frog humans again. Uh, absolutely. Let's see. What's next on the list? Oh, you got another shrine. If you continue down the uh, path. <laughs> got a couple of them, yeah. Yep. Are we still rolling with classic next week? Uh, y yes. Uh, I'm going to give uh, Unity a good workout this week and mainly figure out how to turn on fucking line of sight. <laughs> wow, what's up with that? <laughs> so, yeah, I'll send you a text when I figure it out there. <laughs> okay, that'd be great. Alright. And uh, sure, you still here? 